Hello friends, this is Vishal and we are going to begin with the second part of the reading and explanation of lesson 1 of biology the leaf for grade 6. In the previous video we explained about parts of a plant and the last thing we discussed was about the stem and the functions of the stem. So today we are going to continue and we are going to start the leaf. The flat and green part of the shoot that grows laterally from the nodes of the stem are known as leaves. So we studied about the nodes of the stem and from those nodes we get the leaves which are green and quite and are also flat. There is always a bud in the axle of the leaf known as the axillary bud which we also discussed that there is always a bud, the axillary bud. So no, we, are, we already know about it. Leaves do not continuously grow like the stem but stop growing on attaining full size or a certain size after that the leaf does not grow so the leaf grows and it achieves one size and once it get, achieves its full size it will stop growing now structure of the leaf when we look at the structure of the leaf it's good to see the diagram here and you can see that the leaf is attached to the stem or the branch with the help of the small stalk here which we know which is called as petiole or petiole then the continuation of this petiole goes further and we call it the midrib this is the midrib the midrib is further divided into branches there inside which are known as veins now when we look at the flat surface of the leaf we call it the lamina or the leaf blade and the edge of the leaf we call it the we call it the leaf margin and the end of the leaf or the tip of the leaf we call it as the leaf apex so the basal part of a leaf is a stalk called the petiole it is attached to the stem at the node and axillary bud is present in the axle of the leaf as mentioned and shown here okay sometimes leaves are directly attached to the stem and uh, they do not have a petiole when that is the case the leaves are known as sessile leaves sessile leaves means this particular structure is not present let's proceed the next part is the leaf blade or the lamina the green flat and the broad part of the leaf is called the leaf lamina or the leaf blade it is the outer edge and is called the leaf margin so we know that the flat surface of the leaf any flat surface of the leaf is known as the leaf lamina and the edge of the leaf we call it as the leaf margin then the midrib the midrib is of course a continuation of the petiolia and then right in the middle we can see that it is the known as the midrib this laterally gives out fine branches known as veins so the midrib gives rise to branches branches which are known as we can see this more clearly here if this is the midrib here we can see these branches coming out from here these are the veins clear I hope so right. then the veins are further divided into smaller branches and they are known as veinlets they help in the conduction of water and food and they also help in the support or the mechanical support to the leaf veins provide a skeleton or supportive framework to the leaf okay 
So we came to know the various parts of the leaf. We saw the typical diagram of the leaf as well. And now we can proceed with the types of leaves. So when we look at the type of leaves, we, we always divide or classify the leaves on a certain basis. So here, leaves can be of two types, simple leaves and compound leaves on the basis of the lamina, whether it is divided or undivided. If the lamina is divided or undivided, based on that, we will be dividing the leaf into simple and compound leaf. First, let's have a look and understand what is a simple leaf. A simple leaf, we will find that the lamina is undivided. It's a single piece. The entire leaf is undivided. For example, here you can see, this is one continuous lamina for one particular leaf here. The entire leaf has one continuous complete lamina here. Such a leaf is known as a simple leaf. So the examples are in mango, in banana and in banyan we will find such leaves. But there may be certain leaves that can give us the idea that they are not simple leaves but they will be. Such are like marginal incisions or incisions are found if present that means the the leaf seems to be divided into smaller leaflets but it's not continuous it's not completely divided such leaves are also simple leaves for example if we have a look at this prickly poppy here now the lamina seems to be divided into leaflets but when we look closely we find that the division is not complete it is an incomplete division because here at the base near the margin or near the midrib we find that the leaf is not completely divided there is some level of continuation here at the base so this is not a complete divided completely divided leaf so we cannot call it as a compound leaf this still remains to be called as a simple leaf and the example here is prickly poppy that's an example now we go to the next leaf that is a compound leaf in a compound leaf the leaf blade or the lamina is divided into smaller units and these smaller units are known as leaflets now we can have a look here now here normally this would have been one continuous leaf normally this would be as one full continuous big leaf here but now we see that the lamina of that big leaf here in nature is found to be divided into leaflets small small leaflets so instead of having one big leaf here that full leaf the lamina is divided into smaller leaflets and therefore this combination of so many leaflets found in a leaf is known as a compound leaf so we call this as a compound leaf and these are found in rows when we have a look at the rows, we can see the rose sapling or the plant and we see the leaves. We'll find that yes, they are, yes, they are compound leaves found there. So on the basis of whether the lamina is one continuous big leaf or the lamina is divided into small leaflets, we divide the leaf into two types, simple leaf and compound leaf, simple and compound. I hope it's clear. Only one thing we have to understand is in simple leaf we may also find leaves that have marginal incisions like this where the lamina seems to be divided but it is not continuously or completely divided at the base it is still joint so we do not call it as a compound leaf we still call it a simple leaf because of it being joined at the base here or it's not being completely divided like in this case here so you can extreme you can see compare the difference so this still remains a simple leaf whereas this is a compound leaf I hope it is extremely clear by now let's have a look at a different classification here yeah? now the different basis of classification on the basis of shape how the leaf looks if it looks like a needle or it looks oval or heart shaped 
or oblong oblong means like a banana yeah banana leaf yes this is called oblong circular you know like a lotus one lotus leaves they are circular or tapering tapering means quite long and then uh, uh, becoming pointed at the end so tapering like see the examples are also important so when you say needle shape we find them in pine and onion when we say oval we find them in guava and apple when we say heart shaped we found them in people people and if you're oblong uh, the oblong leaf uh, which is the typical example is in uh, banana then the circular leaves we find them in lotus and nasturtium and nasturtium uh, but i believe lotus is easy to remember so you can go ahead with that then tapering it is found in eucalyptus and ashoka all right so there are some more leaves here for you to see deem banana people people here okay now the third on the basis of margin margin you know the edge the edge of the leaf so how is the edge when we look at the margin here if it's a complete margin like here complete margin we don't find any uh, we find the margin to be quite smooth as well and we don't find any distinctness about it it's just complete the way of a typical leaf should be then we call it as a complete or entire margin and we it is found in people as you can see a people tree tooted or serrated margin if we talk about tooted or serrated margin we can talk about here yes here the edge is like a uh, like tooted here we can find like the edge is like the edge of a saw that cuts wood okay so we find the edge here to be having various rough toothed edges or serrated then we find this here in uh, china in china rose or we can find them in neem also okay then we come to wavy margin wavy margin means that we look when we put the leaf across our eye line and we can see that yes the margin is little wavy there it will not be straight the margin of the leaf will not be straight it will be wavy wavy so that we find in uh, a mango tree or an ashoka tree there the, the leaves there they're also known as they we also find them as uh, wavy means not straight like this like a wave fine then we come to spinous margins or spinous margins means they will have like thorn like structures on the margin this we find strictly in prickly proppy so these are the different uh, ways how we are going to classify the different kind of leaves the first classification was on the basis of the lamina whether it is completely divided or it remains undivided or it also remains incompletely divided which is also known as marginal incision okay incisions okay then the second basis we came to about shape and the third one we came to about basis of margin now we move forward we look at the arrangement of leaves here now when we look at the arrangement of leaves we found yes in our syllabus we have to study based on this diagram as well it's very easy to understand look at the first arrangement as alternate alternate means the way the leaf is attached to the branch so if one leaf is attached on this point the other leaf is attached alternatively to the other point if the third leaf is alternatively on the other point here and the fourth one opposite that side but little higher so this is alternate alternate means that here you see only one leaf arises from each node only one leaf arises from each node the next leaf arises from the successive node in opposite direction so the next leaf will arise on the next node but it will be on the opposite direction then the next leaf will come on the next node but in opposite direction so this is known as alternate easy to understand one leaf on each node and the next leaf comes on the opposite direction so easy to understand opposite is the second arrangement is opposite in this plant like jasmine and guava two leaves arise on each node opposite to each other so on each node there are two leaves so if there is a node if this is a branch and here this is a node here then we will find one leaf coming out here and we'll find the another leaf coming out here just opposite to each other so there will be two leaves that are coming out there will be two leaves that are actually coming out 
on a node in opposite direction 2 1 2 1 and 2 so there are two leaves that came out on one node in opposite directions so this is known as opposite then that's easy to understand no worries now comes world world means circular circular now you see here more than two leaves are attached more than two leaves are attached so one two three so in this case three leaves are attached at one node and they are in different angles if we see they are different angles then we go further then the top one is in a different angle then the we go on top again three in a different angle then on one three here in a different angle so number one on one node we'll have more than two rather in this case three leaves as we go top again there will be three leaves on the single on the single node but here the angle of the leaf coming out will be different from the angle coming out here so we are going to go further again there are three leaves coming out but at a different angle the angle at which the leaves are coming out here are different from here okay so this is the way how we talk about we came to know about the arrangement of leaves here first was alternate and then came opposite and then came world so this was world here now we go to the next topic here venation of leaf venation venation means just have a look here arrangement of veins in the lamina how the veins are arranged in the lamina how the veins are arranged in the lamina so two types are found reticulate venation as here reticulate venation is very easy to understand you have a midrib and then uh, you have from the midrib you have the various veins coming out and then from the veins you have various veinlets coming out a typical example here is people so people is a typical example in this we can find regular distribution of the lambda it, it's forming a network like a network here you can see it's like a network but just and it is also found in dicot plants so uh, good way of uh, associating reticulate variation is found in dicot plants dicots which i already told you which means it has two cotyledons that form the early uh, leaves for a seed that germinates so then we come to parallel variation the second one is parallel variation as you can see here in this case yeah this is the midrib but all the veins that are coming out are parallel to each other they're just straight lines parallel to each other they are not going in a certain arrow or a certain angular direction no they are all parallel so this is called parallel venation here yeah. and this parallel venation is found in monocot plants some examples are banana grass maize wheat so here yeah. we came to know the venation of leaves is of two types reticulate venation found on dicot plants and parallel venation found in monocot plants Typical examples of the diagrams are here for you to see. You can easily see here the veins are parallel and here they are at a certain angle as normally found. Now we look, let's look at the functions of the leaf. When we look at the functions of the leaf, first one is photosynthesis. Very easy to understand. Photosynthesis is all about production of food and most of us know that. No problem about it. So we know that plants are autotrophs. Autotrophs means self, making their food self or nourishing themselves. So in photosynthesis, they use water, carbon dioxide in the presence of chlorophyll and in the presence of sunlight and food is prepared for the plant. So this is photosynthesis. This takes place in the leaf as shown here and then the food is produced and transported to the entire plant so one function is major function of the leaf is production of food okay then we come to the second function of uh, the leaf which is transpiration transpiration means that from the leaf water vapor will be given out or the excess water that is there in the plant will be lost from the leaf into the atmosphere water vapor this particular we call it this particular process we call as transpiration is given here very clearly transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plant 
Transpiration is the loss of water in the form of water vapor from the aerial parts of the plant, very especially from the leaves. Now, what is the significance of transpiration? This is a very important question as well. First is cooling effect. Cooling effect, how do we get it? Now, from the surface of the leaf, when water will be lost, it will actually take the energy or the heat from the surface here and it will evaporate. When it evaporates, it's taking the heat from the surface of the leaf and therefore when you take the heat from the surface or any surface you actually offer a cooling effect to that surface so definitely it offers a cooling effect not only to the plant but also the surrounding of the plant because of the presence of water vapor and its evaporation you'll find it's much more cooler so a cooling effect is an important one yeah second one that we talked about the transpiration also helps in transpiration pull. Now what is transpirational pull? Transpirational pull if we again understand here. Since water is being given out from here and we know that water has been moving in a continuous channel from the roots, from the roots, stem, branch, leaf and the outlet that is generally stomata so as this movement is uh, through a continuous channel of water as water is moving here continuously as water is being lost from here that creates a pull or it creates a vacuum here for more water to be brought here and this further is transferred again transferred i need more water we need more water we need more water and as soon as it comes to the roots here they need more water and more water is pulled so this continuously pulling of water from the roots to the stem and from the stem to the branch and from the branch to the leaf is continuously done because from here there is a continuous loss of water going on as per the need of the of the tree Clear. So this transpiration helps in the ascent of sap, also known as transpirational pull, that helps in helping the plant to get to pull the water and the minerals from the root to the leaves. I hope till here it is clear. So in my next video we will go with the next topic which is modification of leaves till here i hope it is clear so please do revisit the videos in case uh, and when you're doing that please keep your book open as well okay thank you so much for your attention god bless you and do see the next video which will be dealing with modification of leaf god bless you and thank you